Digest. True stories from real life selected from the paper. Ordeal at Yuba Gap. The crisis that overtook the city of San Francisco streamliner to become the greatest drama of the snow since the Thane tragedy at Donner Pass. Six hours of surgery. The taut, exciting drama that envelops the lives of five people working in the hushed concentration of the operating room to save a boy's life. The man who beat death. The warm, moving, personal story of tennis champion Billy Talbert and his valiant uphill battle to victory over diabetes. The secret weapon of Joe Smith. The classic story of the United Nations and how one reporter proved to the Soviets that the pen is mightier than the sword. My first bullfight. The amusing and highly exciting story behind America's Toreador, Sidney Franklin's climb to fame and fortune as Brooklyn's first matador. Your favorite stories brought to life on TV Reader's Digest. This is the story of a perfect crime. It began on a sunny afternoon in August on a busy street of a large city, a street that was very much like any other busy street. Office buildings, stores, and on the corner, a bank. One thing about money, it excites the imagination, especially other people's money. John. I want to look at it. Why? It's nothing you'd be interested in. Isn't it? Open it. I said you wouldn't be interested in it, Nora. I know that's what you told me. Open it. All right, honey. Looks great, doesn't it? It looks horrible. It's another job, isn't it, Johnny? Well, isn't it? It's the best yet. It's a setup, a real A number one setup. Didn't you tell me there weren't going to be any other jobs? Didn't you promise me that? Look, you've got to know something. I'm broke, flat. We've been living, John. Sure, but how? I borrowed money, furnished rooms. What kind of work could I get? I'd have to start at the bottom like a boy. Well, I'm not built like that. So where's the future? Listen to me good, Nora. This job could make a fortune for us. We don't need a fortune. All we need is just... Nora, I want to I invest in diamonds. I want to make you shine. I want everybody to know you're Johnny Martin's wife. I can be Johnny Martin's wife without diamonds. But, Nora, just this last time, just let me make this one big stake for us. Johnny. Johnny, I, I don't want to be in love with a thief. Don't say that. I'm sorry, Johnny. I've told you before. It's on the level and nothing. But, honey, this is, this is a cinch. It's so beautiful, it rings bells. Look, there's nothing to worry about. I've never missed in my life on one of these. Nora. I've never been in jail, have I? Have they ever caught up with me once? Or just this last time, all we need is one last shot. And this is it. It's a sweet setup. I tell you, we can't miss. Johnny, it's me or that sweet setup. You can't have it both. Nora, 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 listen. I jump out of a window without you. Don't talk that way. I don't want to be married to a thief. All right. If that 
just the way you want it. All right. I've got to do this job. I can't quit broke. Goodbye, Joe. Right there. When he opens the door of the cab, the driver isn't in position. The man on the inside isn't in position either because he's waiting to jump from the truck to the street. That's the second we hit him. It's pretty tight, wouldn't you say? Not as tight as you might think. After all, they're not expecting it. They've been doing the same job week after week. Surprise is on our side. We'll need help. What do you figure on? We need two men to hold guns in the guards, one man to take care of those ice cream peddlers, two men to load the money onto the truck, and maybe a couple of getaway drivers. That's an awful lot. What do you guess there's in it for us? I'm not guessing. I know. The payroll's about a half a million dollars. Wow. That's a lot of dough. What do we do first? Well, first we figure out the getaway. We work this thing backwards. Boats, that's what we need. Boats? Yes, this plant is only a block or so from the river in that big open pier. We leave the plant in two cars, take them to the pier and ditch them, transfer the money to a couple of boats, then we go anywhere we please. Boy, when I said you were the only guy for this job. The police will never think of boats. By the time they do, it'll be too late. Yeah, you got something there. And I know a couple of guys to handle the boats. Reliable? Reliable? These guys ran bootleg back in the old days on the river. Harry Johnson and George Hammond. All right, get hold of them. We'll need two boats. A good, fast cabin cruiser, the kind guys use for fishing. And a small boat with a motor on the back of it. A dory. Whatever you call it, you know what I mean. Now, there'll be two getaway cars. Frankie and I will take the money down to Pier 16 in one of them. Now, that's where you, George, will have the uh, dory tied up. Okay. Now, we'll meet up with you, Harry, in Mid-River, somewhere around Pier 23. Now, the men in the other car will board the cabin cruiser on Pier 23. Isn't that where you said the boat could be tied off? That's a steady berth. Good. And nobody will be suspicious. We'll just be a bunch of guys going fishing. Sounds good to me. Only where do we get the cars? You boys worry about the boats. Frankie will take care of the cars. You got a line yet? What about Luke Cook? I don't want him. That woman of his talks too much. Yeah. Hey, how about Vic Thomas? Uh, Vic's a good man, but isn't he doing time? No, that was a couple of years ago. He's got a garage over on Biscay Street. He's running hot automobiles. All right, let's talk to him. I wouldn't go for this, Johnny, except you're in it. I heard about you. They say you never miss. Yeah, nothing to worry about with Johnny to work it out. He really knows his stuff. What do you think we'll need? Well, we'll run the boat across the Pier 49, the other side of the river. Then we unload the stuff into a small service truck. Come across the bridge back out here. Nobody will be watching incoming trucks. The police will be too busy looking at everything going the other way. Yeah, we can stash the truck upstairs. I got a little hideout up there where we do repaint jobs on hot cars. Sounds okay. We'll use it for a meeting place, too. I don't want everybody running in and out of my apartment. It'll attract too much attention. How many more guys do you think we'll need? Four good men. Fellas who can handle a gun without shooting it. No drunks or dopeys. Oh, Walt and Stan Edwards are around. They're good boys. And I think they can use the action. Yeah, good boys, both of them. Sorry with me. Maybe they know a couple of fellas they like to work with. I'll ask him. Well, let's try to get everybody together by next Wednesday night. We'll meet upstairs. The sooner we start rehearsing this thing, the better. That's all a matter of timing. 
timing and doing what you're told to do. And doing no more than you're told to do. Now, here's the layout. All right. You stand and Walt. Over here across the street from the plant, there's a playground. And right near the gate, a place where they pitch horseshoes. Go over there every day for the next week. You don't talk, you're just interested in the game. That way people get used to seeing you around, pay no attention to you. Vic, you're sitting in a car up here at the other end of the block, heading west. Got it? Got it. Frankie, you're in another car up here at the other end of this street, heading south. Got it. Ernie, you're over here, standing near the ice cream peddlers. They've gone through their morning supply, have come back to the plant you fill. Mm -hmm. Now, beginning tomorrow, go over there, start making friends with them. Tell them you're interested in going into the business. Ask them questions. Go down there every day till they're used to seeing you. Harry, you'll be in the cabin cruiser waiting for car number one. That's the car Vic will be driving. Are you Russ? You'll be driving a truck. You'll be on the other side of the river at Pier 49 waiting for us. Now don't get lost. I won't get lost. Good. You better go over there tomorrow and have a look around. Size up the best way to drive in and out. Now at the base of the pier is a big warehouse. Right in front of it is a parking place. Now a lot of trucks use it so you won't be noticed. You better get down there early so you can park near the dock. Right. You, George, you'll be waiting for us under Pier 16 with that dory. Now, when Frankie and I arrive with the money, you'll come back to the garage and wait for us to return with the truck. Right. Well, that takes care of everybody except me. Beginning tomorrow, I start pushing an ice cream wagon. I show up at the plant every afternoon at 2, stock up for the rest of the day. That way, people get used to seeing me around, doing business with me. Does everybody understand everything so far? Right. Yeah. Good. Pretty clear. And here's the trap. The armored car drives up to the plant, right here. Across the street, Stan and Walt are watching them pitch horseshoes. Are you, Ernie? Mm -hmm. You're standing right over here, talking to the ice cream peddlers. Vic in his car, parked up at that end of the street, starts his motor as soon as the armored car arrives. Frankie, you pick up the armored car as it passes you and park right here. Your horn starts blowing. You can't stop it. You get out of the car, but you don't open the hood. Now, I'm right here with my ice cream wagon. Everything starts on a signal from me. Remember that. No signal, no start. I'll ring the bells on my ice cream wagon. That starts Frankie's horn blowing. Everybody's attention turns toward him. Stan and Walt start crossing over toward the armored truck. Right. Now, Walt, you get the guard's guns. Right. And Stan, don't forget the Tommy gun inside the truck. I won't. Ernie, mm -hmm. you cross over to me. I hand you a Tommy gun, which I get out of my ice cream wagon. You turn on the ice cream peddlers and anybody else who happens to be there. Tell them to lie flat on the sidewalk. That way they won't get hurt. Who will cover the guards? I will. In the meantime, Vic, you'll have driven your car down and parked it on the other side of the armored truck. Frankie will drive his car around to the rear of the armored truck. Now, Stan and Walt, you'll move in and unload the money dumping it into Frankie's car. Now, as soon as that's done, all of you load into Vic's car. Vic heads north, then east to First Avenue and Pier 23. I'll stay behind, cover you till you get off. Then I'll get into Frankie's car. We'll drive east, then south on First Avenue to Pier 16. From then on, it's already planned. Any questions? Yeah, what about the hardware? You mentioned a couple of Tommy guns. I know a guy who can supply us. It'll cost us a couple of grand. Okay, make the arrangements. Anything else? After you ring the ice cream bell, how long should the operation take? Three minutes. That's not very long. That's as long as we've got. I tested the alarm the other day, short-circuited it. It took the police cars five minutes to get there. We'll give ourselves a margin of two minutes on the basis of that count and do the job in three minutes or else. One more question. Let's have it. How do we split the dough? I take 25%, the rest is cut equally. That's my deal, I'm not forcing anybody to go along. Yeah, all right. 
That's good enough for okay. me. Okay. All right. All right, we'll spend the next week getting ready. Have people getting used to seeing us. Then a week from Wednesday, it'll be the real thing. Can you please tell me where Forsyth Street is? Two blocks west and turn to your right. Thank you. It was tough luck, but it was better than going ahead. She was right in the middle of the whole operation. Ah, we should have plugged her. Grabbed the dough. It was all there, right in front of us. No shooting. Do as I say and there won't have to be any. We use hardware to scare people and that's all. We'll try again next Wednesday. into the truck. Ten more seconds and you're dead. All right, boys, count to 50 before you get off the ground. That's it, Vic. What's your total? 475,544. What a haul. That's the biggest thing I was ever on. What happened to a hundred grand, Frankie? I don't get you. What are you talking about? That's a receipt. I took it from the guide. It says there $575,544. What about it, Frankie? Hey, well, don't look at me. Why don't you ask him? He had as much chance to take it as I did. But I didn't take it, Frankie. You took it. You slipped it out when we were coming here in the dory. Where is it, Frankie? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. 
Okay, I'll tell you. It's in a it's in a footlock under the life preserver. It's a good place for it. Get it, will you, Harry? <laughs> it was just a gag, fellas. It was a little stunt, that's all. It's just a little stunt, that's all. It sure was, Frankie. That's what happens to double crosses. Well, this one's mine. You boys cut up the rest, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, Johnny, any last words of advice? So far, it's a clean operation. The police haven't got a thing. Frankie and the two boats are at the bottom of the river. There's nothing to tie any of us in. But don't make any mistake, the police aren't dumb. They'll start putting two and two together if they see us hanging around. My advice is to separate and stay apart for at least a year. So long, boys. See you around. Wait a minute, Johnny. In case something comes up and we need you, where'll you be? Never mind where I'll be. You boys take care of yourselves. I don't like guys who don't tell you where they are. you come here? For you, Nora. What else? We're going to have a wonderful life together, you and I, from here in. What kind of a life could we make built on a crime? Have you ever asked yourself that? Do you think anything can come out of it? What of our children? Have you thought of them? Oh, it's no go, Johnny. I couldn't live a life like that. It just wouldn't work. But I'll go straight from here in. You have my promise. That isn't enough. Not enough? Well, what do you want me to do? Return the money. Give it back and... and then come to me. Nora. Nora, that's crazy. We wouldn't have a cent between us. I've got more than $100,000. That's more money than we could ever hope to make. I don't want that kind of money. Will you ever get that through your head? Oh, I want you, Johnny, but I want you honest and clean. I want you to be somebody I can live with proudly. I don't want to look at you and think I'm married to a thief. If you expect me to give that money back, you've got another thing coming. He couldn't do a thing like that. He'd have to be crazy. Uh, guys blow their corks all the time. I've heard a guy's going straight, but giving it back. It's on account of a dame, his wife. I didn't know Johnny was married. She has him talking to Walmir as the lawyer, trying to see what kind of a deal he can get. Next thing, it'll be the DA. I know where you can find him. Sure. Bring him in. Right. I don't see what difference it makes. After all, you guys all got your share. I can do what I want with mine. I don't ask you what you did with yours. Sure, you can do what you want, Johnny. But that don't include giving it back and singing. I'm not a talker. A guy who goes straight is the kind of guy who'll talk. Sooner or later, he talks. That's the way it always is. We ain't got nothing against you going straight. It's just giving it back, that's all. Why do you have to give it back? That's something you wouldn't understand. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, why don't you give it to us? I've got to give it back. That's all there is to it. You'll just have to take my word. I'm not going to talk. Okay, Johnny. Have it your way. We'll take your word for it. John Martin, the police were able to solve the riddle of the great armored car robbery. 
and eventually all who took part in it were brought to justice. Pour on watch for your favorite Reader's Digest story. Vividly brought to life on TV Reader's Digest. Direct from the pages of the magazine read by over 40 million people throughout the world. Stories created and approved by families everywhere.